So in uh, this lecture, I'm going to continue this discussion of this asymptotic series of the complementary error function. So where we ended up was that we have this complementary um, uh, error function uh, right here, which I've written as a series of terms, which has in it um, the double factorial and in the denominator 2 to the x squared to the power n. Um, and so, so really the question is, you know, um, to what limit can we take this? Um, and so we could think of it um, in a couple different ways. One of them is that if we just um, don't, you know, if we truncate the series, or you know, if we, well, if we stop um, creating terms, what we're left with is the error function, let's say after about three terms, would be e to the minus x squared over x, the square root of pi, 1 minus 1 over 2x squared. And then after that, I would just add to it 3 over 2 square root of pi, the integral of x to infinity, t to the minus 4, e to the minus t squared dt. So if you could solve that integral exactly, you wouldn't have to make an approximation. Um, you could just stay, stop right there, um, and you'd have your answer. Um, so if you think about it, you know, basically ignoring the integral is like saying, I'm going to truncate the series, um, so I don't want to keep adding more terms into my summation. So the question is, where can we say... You know, where can we stop and say stop solving the integrals or just choose a certain number of terms in the um, series um, so so maybe we'll use that maybe we'll use the integral and see how big is the answer to the integral depending on the value of x which is in the limit so so x is in the limits of the integral and so that means t is in a range from x to infinity. Um, so that would mean that you know t is much is greater than or equal to x, um, which means that 1 over x is greater than or equal to 1 over t. Um, so this kind of is what's setting the limit. Um, is depending on what the value of t we choose, that's going to tell us how big that integral um, is going to be. And so, um, yeah, so if you take a look at this, then let's take a look at this integral. The integral from x to infinity of t um, to the minus 4 power e to the minus t squared dt, I can write as the integral of x to infinity of t to the minus fifth power, t e to the minus t squared dt. Um, and if I write it now in terms of x's, then this is the same equation has got to be less than or equal to if I switch this over to x to the minus fifth times t e to the minus t squared dt. So all I've done is switch my x's and t's in this one term right here. Um, and uh, But I've changed from an equality to an inequality to show that the integral on the right hand side has got to be bigger um, or equal to the integral on the left hand side. Um, so, but now that I have have included an x in it, I can take it outside the integral and I'm left with x to the minus fifth power, the integral of x um, to infinity t e to the minus t squared dt. So written that way, that integral is actually pretty easy to solve. We would just do a substitution um, of something like u for t squared. Um, so let u equal 
t squared, and I would get a du is equal to 2t dt, which means that my integral now becomes 1 over x to the fifth minus 1 half e to the minus t squared evaluated from x to infinity, which would give me um, 1 over x to the fifth minus 1 half e to the minus infinity plus 1 half e to the minus x squared um, and e to the minus infinity is basically zero so I would get now e to the minus x squared over 2 times x to the fifth power so the integral has to be smaller than this value if I want to say that I want to um, negate it and truncate the series um, at that point. Um, so if I could write that down now um, as an equation and basically say e to the minus x squared over x um, times the square root of pi times 1 minus 1 over 2x cubed has to be greater than e to the minus x squared over 2x to the fifth. Um, so that's what's going to set um, the, uh, the limit. Um, or, I mean, basically, I guess we could clean this up and say, get rid of that and that, make that a fourth and get rid of that. So we've got um, 1 minus 1 over 2x cubed is going to be greater than the square root of pi over 2x to the 4. Um, and so, you know, judging from the size of x, it says, you know, two terms is a pretty good approximation uh, when it comes to truncating the series um, um, on this asymptotic form of the complementary error function. Okay. <clears throat> um, so uh, the uh, the next thing we can consider um, is now uh, is a new topic um, than the error function, and that's something called Stirling's formula. So with Stirling's formula, given that the gamma function is written as this um, is written in that form then what I could do is to rewrite this as the integral of 0 to infinity e to the p natural log x minus x dx so I've basically taken that x to the power of p and put it up inside of the exponential. So if we let x equal p plus y times the square root of p, then dx is equal to the square root of p dy, <coughs> and my p factorial is now equal to the integral of minus the square root of p to infinity e to the p natural log p plus y square root of p minus p minus y square root of p um, there's a square root of p and then there's a dy Okay, so that looks good, kind of like a nasty um, integral, but um, we could expand the natural log of p plus y square root of p. So if we do that expansion, then what we get, um, if we expand it in a power series, is that this quantity 
becomes the natural log of p plus the natural log of 1 plus y over the square root of p. Um, or basically, I can rewrite it in this fashion um, and then do the expansion and get natural log of p plus y over square root of p minus y squared over 2p plus dot dot dot. <clears throat> so um, for large p, what you get is p times the natural log of p of p plus y oops, of p plus y square root of p minus p minus y square root of p is equal to p natural log of p plus the square root of p times y minus y squared over 2 minus p square root of uh, so minus p minus the square root of p times y <coughs> Um, which becomes p natural log of p minus p minus y squared over 2. <clears throat> um, which means that p factorial is approximately the integral of minus the square root of p to infinity e to the p natural log of p minus p e to the minus y squared over 2 square root of p dy so now the only thing is you have this integral the only factor is that e to the minus y squared over 2 and so um, in the end um, what you have is uh, um, Um, as p goes to infinity, then this integral of minus the square root of p to infinity of e to the minus y squared over 2 basically becomes 0. And then what I'm left with is that p factorial is approximately e to the p natural log of p minus p times the square root of p times the square root of 2 pi. So these approximations are getting kind of messy, um, but in the end I can rewrite this as e to the natural log of p to the power of p times e to the minus p square root of p square root of 2 pi. <coughs> and um, and so basically I can um, rewrite this as, um, uh, oh, p to the power p e to the minus p square root of 2 pi p. Okay. So, um, you know, so it's still kind of, you know, a messy result. And it is still an approximation, but um, it may be a little bit easier um, to write uh, to write it that way um, than uh, it was before. So now, if we take the natural log of the factorial, we would get something that is basically approximately p natural log of p minus p, um, which is how Sterling's formula is usually written out. 